Welcome back to the 429 Podcast. I'm 2. I'm 9. And I'm 4. And today's episode is called, Was College Actually Worth It? Right? So this is a little, like, detract from our tech episode, but since we were all CS majors in college, we thought we would Mm -hmm. talk a little bit about this. But before we get started, we just want to remind you that please like, subscribe, comment, right? We love all the feedback we're getting from you guys. It's October. It's spooky season. So we have a couple Halloween Halloween themed posts and ideas coming up in our brains that were brainstorming. So we would love to get your feedback on some of those as well. Mm-hmm. But like, subscribe, comment, check us out on our website, the 429podcast.com. And we're also available on all major social media and podcast platforms. Yep. But with that, guys, let's get started, right? So if you guys have been listening to our po- a podcast for a while, I think, you know, I don't I forget what episode number this is, but we've been doing a bunch of these episodes for a while, right? And I think it's we've made it pretty clear that we're software engineers, computer science enthusiasts, and just overall nerds, right? Mm-hmm. I think we made that pretty clear through our TechCast episodes Absolutely. and through everything we've done now, right? For sure. But I guess the main question, right? And I guess, you know, we've had these conversations in the past, but it's nice to actually get a deep down, like, live right now of what we always talk about is, so let's start with you guys, right? Why did we actually choose to go to college, right? Because we've seen people Mm -hmm. pick up, you know, computer science skills and programming skills outside of school, right? Tutorials through other stuff and everything. But why did you guys specifically go into college? So let's start with each of our, I guess, like small backstories. So I don't know. Nine, why don't we start with you? Okay, mine's very interesting. Uh, Mine's, I'm 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 always sure it's going to be very different to fours. Um, But I started a CS background simply due to luck. So originally for, I would say since I was in middle school, not even earlier, elementary school, I wanted to be an architect. I was very creative. I love drawing. I love the mathematical and engineering side effect. And I wanted to be an architect. Um, I applied a bunch of schools. I got in, but they were all really expensive, right? Um, So I was like out of options. Luckily, my counselor was really good friends with the one of the administrators, the school that we go to. Um, basically, what happened was at the last minute, I decided to apply to the school. And basically, I, I realized that the career that I wanted wasn't, you know, offered at the co- school we're at. So at the last minute ditch, I was like, well, I, I built computers in the last, last few years. I enjoy technology in general. I'm a nerd about it. So screw it. I'm going to be a CS. And then I just went down that rabbit hole. Yeah, no, no, no. That's that's pretty different from me. Pretty different from me. Do you have anything else you want to add on, or you think I should just uh, kind of? Pick no, up? no, just just hop, just hop on. Okay, so, I mean, I've always been interested in CS, right? So, um, probably back through late middle school, early high school, I got into you know the whole taking apart computers, putting them back together, just making sure everything still works, like blah blah blah, whatever. But. Pretty much up until high school, maybe my freshman year of high school, I was dead set on being a doctor, either you know some type of surgeon or a general practitioner. I wasn't really certain exactly what I wanted to go into, but I was pretty certain I wanted to be a doctor or work in the medical field somehow. So eventually, anyway, I got into the whole computing thing and the computer building and yada, yada, yada. And, you know, I just kind of fell in love with the programming aspect of stuff once I got into software and all the hardware stuff I already loved and, you know, all like the video game aspects of it that, that, you know, I've been working with mods and hosting servers for different video games and, you know, whatever, ever since I'm a, you know, small and whatnot. So I am, uh, I just, I kind of just fell in love with the whole, with the whole, with the whole concept. So just a big fan of it in general and... I mean, this is kind of what pushed me to college in, in terms of, or pushed me to CS in general. In terms of what pushed me to go to school, to go to college in general, I was just overall a really big fan of, I guess, wanting to learn more and having a formal education and really having people to learn from instead of having to just kind of guide it myself. So, two, how about you? Yeah, so on my end, really, I was... I kind of like always had an enjoyment of technology and of all of this. So, you know, when I was four, I really started playing around with like computer parts and really uh, taking control of like how all those little things really work. And so that's what started my interest in computers. 
But ironically, I went more towards the business route because I sort of got into finance and like the mathematics of business. So it's finance and accounting and stuff like that, right? Um, ironically, that was my minor in college as well, which was really interesting. But um, what really drove me into CS was I was trying to learn how to program an app back in high school. I think this was my junior year of high school, I want to say, where I was trying to figure out like, all right, how do I build this iPhone app? And I started working with Objective-C because I was trying to build it for um, iOS devices. And for those of you who worked with Objective-C, you guys know the pain of working in Objective-C. So lots of respect there. And it's just, it was horrendous. And I was never able to actually pick it up, right? So I went to college to really figure out how do I program an app? That was the one question I had. And I wanted to know the answer. So I went in as a computer science software engineering major to go and figure it out. But as I started getting deeper and deeper into software engineering, especially freshman and sophomore years, what had happened was, you know, I was like, oh, it's super easy to build an app. But I was like, that's pointless. There's so many other interesting things in computing that piqued my interest, um, such as machine learning, data science, artificial intelligence. This stuff started to really pique my interest. And that's actually eventually what I focus deeply on. That as well as security and how those two really mesh together. That's what sort of led me to this whole concept of uh, software engineering. And then four years honestly flew by um, and I ended up completing that major. And then I was like, okay, cool. And got that degree and moved on really. But mm -hmm. that's sort of what really piqued my interest to get into you know, computer science and everything. But I mean, going beforehand so i guess i sort of explained to you guys like my major choice beforehand right like i was business business oriented you know i think nine you alluded to that you were a whole architecture and alluded to and it kind of just fell in like computer science really just fell into our laps because of just our minor interest in technology that we had right mm -hmm. um but i guess one thing i want to talk about here is like why did you guys pick the school that you guys went to Right. So why did you guys choose to go to the university uh, that you majored in? Was it like commuting wise? Was it easier living wise? Maybe it was a scholarship. I don't know. Right. But mm -hmm. like, what, what were your guys reasons for going into the, sure. uh, the university sure. that you guys attended? Sure. So for me, I visited a ton of schools and, you know, I like the idea of going away. I thought it could have been cool. But to be completely honest with you, I, I ended up deciding I was going to commute because, I mean, mostly because it was just so much cheaper. Where you're talking about tens of thousands of dollars of debt I don't need to take out unnecessarily. And I guess for, for me, a point of reference for our international listeners, we're in the United States. So yeah. with the schooling crisis, a very different here than it is in other Absolutely. nations. Absolutely. You know, so for me, it just wasn't worth it, right? Like, you know. I have a very good relationship with my family. You know, we're together all the time anyway. You know, it's not like I was in a rush to get out of the house and get away from everybody. Um, and, you know, luckily, because of that relationship I have with my family and my parents, um, it just wasn't a big deal for me to be home. It, you know, I was, like I said, a lot of people run away to college because they have, you know, these visions of grandeur and they really absolutely just need to get out of the house and they want to live on their own and have their own rules or whatever. But, you know, I kind of just commingle. Right, I live with them, and we have, like I said, we have a very good relationship, and I just wasn't in a rush to get out. So that's why I really decided to save myself all that money and just went to a local school. And, you know, I had a handful of local schools, and at one of them, I almost got a full ride to. It was very close. I was sitting at like a 75 or 80% scholarship. Um, and that was a very lucrative financial offer they gave me. And there were a couple other schools I liked, um, but I actually ended up not going to that school. So I took a far less of a scholarship, probably mm, was slightly more than half, maybe 60% I got to the school that I was going to. So still good, but definitely overall much more expensive. But I think the thing that really kind of drove me to make that decision was the curriculum that they had, the teachers that I met, the contacts I met, all the students on campus that I spoke with. It was just different. You know, I found that a lot of, uh, at that school where I had the big scholarship, the, 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 the kind of teachers and professors just seemed more old school. They were much older and like just their teaching style didn't really fit with me. It didn't kind of like, 
I didn't connect with them like I did at the other school. And, you know, so that's why I think it's very important to connect with the professors that you're going to um, and the people you're going to be learning from every day. Because, you know, maybe you go on a campus and you fall in love with the campus and the scenery and this and that. But at the end of the day, you're going there for an education, right? So unless you really connect with the people who you're going to be learning from and you have a good feeling about the curriculum and the people that you're, you know, there for, you're, you're, I mean, realistically, you're paying for those professors more than you are anything else. So for me, that was the most important piece. And like I said, I just connected with them more. Nine, what about you? So mine was, again, my situation is very different from before. Um, I wouldn't say I have a great relationship with my parents. I mean, I can coexist with them. And, you know, we have, you know, moments or, you know, it's, we, we travel, we do stuff, but I definitely wanted to get out, you know, I wanted to leave the nest. I felt I'm a very independent person, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I've done a lot of things in my life. Uh, it's mostly not due to the fault of my parents, but just due to my circumstances of me being a first generation, right? Uh, I'm sure anyone who's a first generation understands that you pretty much have to do a lot of the decisions yourself, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and you kind of tend to grow up a lot faster than, you know, your other friends. And stuff like yeah. So I became very independent because of that situation and, and that growing up. I mean, it's not because my parents, you know, put it upon them, upon me to do it, but it was just the circumstances that I, I was the only one that really knew the language and the culture. So it, it was just that sort of thing. Um, so I, I was, I'm a very independent person and I wanted to go out, but I'm also the type of person that um, who's, I would, would say it's a realist, right? I understand our financial situation wouldn't allow me to really go out there with the extra costs and fees associated with it unless I got a full ride. And honestly, because I did a lot of decisions, especially the college planning phase, and I was dealing with AP and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I was taking like five APs at the time. Um, I didn't, I sh I didn't prioritize a lot of the college stuff as I should have. So I applied a lot of good schools and I got in a lot of them, but my dumbass self didn't realize that schools are expensive, especially in the United <laughs> States. So when I did get to these schools, these really great schools, and I got applied to them, most of them gave me a scholarship, but very little. Um, especially the state ones where they pretty much don't give any financial aid. It's um, So I was in a very tough decision where I was pretty much hitting the deadlines for most schools. Like most schools at this point were like, Already, their deadlines were closed, and I was trapped. I wanted to go to college, but I, I made the dumbass decision of not picking something that's more reasonable. Um, like I alluded to earlier, the college that, I'm, that I went to eventually, my counselor had a very special connection to the school, uh, and she was able to get me in past the deadline. Um, mm -hmm. And when and because she knew the connection and stuff like that, I got a response relatively quickly, and I got a really good scholarship. And since it was really close by and stuff like that, that meant I didn't have to dorm and stuff, so less of a fee. And primarily, most of my decision to come into the school I went to now was partly, mostly financially and behind everything. It was it was very cheap to commute to it. I didn't have uh, I spend dorming cost, uh, like food and stuff would be, you know, I helped with my parents on that side. And also, I had a little brother at the time that, you know, I was helping raise and, you know, take care of. So it all culminated from a financial standpoint. Did I like the school and did I did I um, like the professors? Hell yeah, that was a really extra bonus at the end of it, right? But unfortunately, it I didn't really have the, the, the timing and everything to really, like, go down as I usually do with big decisions in my life, like step by step, statistically, data by data. So it just so happened that at a last minute decision turned out to be a really good one. Yeah. No, yeah, that's, cool. that's interesting. Too, how about you? Yeah. I guess from my end, right, um, I applied to a bunch of schools, right? I applied to, you know, a couple of my dream schools that we are always told to apply to, right? Yeah. Um, one dream school I didn't apply to at all because I knew I wasn't going to get in, sadly. Um, but the one, I, the one, one of my dream schools I actually applied to, I applied early decision, right? Which in the United States, for uh, those of you who are international, means that if you were to be accepted, you're guaranteed to go, no questions asked or anything, right? 
Like it's a pre-acceptance also at the same time from your end. It's like a binding contract. It's a binding contract, exactly, right? Um, unfortunately, I got rejected from that school, right? And I was in shock because my grades and all the statistics really far exceeded everything that they were looking for. So that was a kind of a shocking point. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think it was a blessing in disguise, right? But I got into my, I guess I had like a top three schools and I got into my the top third one, right? As yeah. well as a couple other notable schools and a couple state schools as well. So for me, it really came down to evaluating the scholarship basis, right? Yeah. And like the cost, because like we've been discussing, you know, cost of schooling in the United States is very expensive for university. Um, and the reason I say university is for those of you who are international, university is your equivalent to our college slash university. I know in some nations, college can be high school, but no, and here it's just straight college university. It's the same thing. But anyway, like I was saying, so as I was evaluating, you know, the offers, my dream school came out to, and I'll tell you guys the number now, was almost about $200,000 of debt I would have walked away from, right? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> that, um, school will stay, that school will happily stay a dream. That's perfectly fine by me. <laughs> so it really came down to evaluating uh, my top three choices. Um, then a couple state schools that are uh, more towards east of me. I disregard it just because of, you know, stuff I've seen and heard about the computer science programs. I wasn't that big of a fan of, right? And so it really came down to three choices for me. Um, One was, you know, the name branded school that a lot of people in um, our city are well aware of. Yeah. Um, One was the university we ended up going to. And one was a, what we call a city university Mm -hmm. that was completely free. Like they offered me a full scholarship and everything, right? As I look through the options, you know, the most notable one, you know, it had a good curriculum. It had everything. It wasn't that bad, but it was 80 grand of debt. So I was like, Ugh, ooh, like that, that's still a lot of money, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. The school that we ended up going to gave me a partial scholarship that offset it. And so it was slightly below 80 grand of debt. But at the same time, it was still some money I had to take out, right? But the curriculum was really nice. And the final school... Right, the one that offered the full scholarship, you know, would have been great, but it felt way too much like high school for me, yeah. which I hated high school, uh, for those of you who know. And it just didn't feel correct to me. It just, I didn't get a good vibe from the school, like when I, saw, when I went to go see it. I took the placement exams and everything and did fine, but like it was just, it, it just didn't sit right with me, right? So that school went out the window. And Damn. so it was really down to, you know, the school we attended to or that major school. And so, you know, four and nine, you guys both know this. I shot an email out to both, uh, to a professor at both schools and wanted to see who would reply first and what their response would actually be. The professor that responded from our university, turns out I got to work with him for the next four to five years and do incredible research, incredible Mm -hmm. opportunities with so many different things. Mm -hmm. That other professor that I emailed at the more well-known school took <laughs> took about six months to reply mm-hmm. suffice to say my decision was already made right and so i call it like a blessing in disguise but that's what really drove me to the university we went to and you know this is a question i want to bring up to you guys right mm-hmm. do you have any regrets or anything you would have done differently throughout the process for me personally right you know I, no because like i feel like i exhausted all my options and i did whatever i could you know, the way the admi- admission councils or everything are skewed, it's kind of tough. But, like, I'm very happy with the decision I made at the end of the day. I don't know. Oh, yeah. What about you guys? Honestly, like I said, usually with big decisions in my life, I usually take a really great prep and organization and stuff like that. And I got to say, this is one of the very few decisions I think I made with a rush intentions, right? And rush nature at all. But despite all that, I wouldn't change the decision at all. I think, uh, relatively speaking, uh, it fit all my goals, mm-hmm. even back then. It, it basically allowed me to stay with the family and to keep costs minimal. And it allowed me to interact with professors with re- various amount of backgrounds and a huge amount of experience behind them all and really get to, you know, yep grow especially with the the size of the school 
mm-hmm. you know, most schools are so big that you nearly never make a connection with the professor on a one-on-one. But our school was a relatively small enough to, you know, still meet the professor and still talk to one-on-one and make these special connections and mentorships while yep. still being relatively large enough to, you know, have a big campus and everything. Ab- absolutely. Um, I mean, I'll tell you right now, the r- really, I would not have changed the thing. Um, I mean, maybe if I could have, I would have told myself to just apply for more schools to kind of get a better feel because I feel like maybe I didn't apply to enough places. But, you know, once again, like, like two was saying, maybe it was a blessing in disguise that I didn't because, you know, I feel like my education I got was spectacular. You know, all of the different opportunities I got in terms of research and um, job opportunities and, you know, even just the other people that went to the school, just the kind of like the culture we had in our computer science department. It was really, really great. And, you know, like I said before, the professors are kind of like the biggest asset you have at your school. They are kind of like who you want to strive to be like. You want to have the knowledge that they have. And we were very lucky in that our professors are very open. They're willing to meet. They're willing to help. There was research opportunities, extracurricular um, opportunities. We had all these cool programs and stuff for different, you know, areas of work. And, I mean, it was it, it was really, really, really great, you know. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm even happy to say that, you know, now after we've graduated, you know, a couple of these professors, I would even consider them my good friends at this point, so. No, yeah. that, and that's a complete valid point. And so I guess, you know, Reflecting on these fond memories of university, mm-hmm. you know, what in general did you remember the most from university? Whether it was from, let's go, let's start with the social aspect. What's a social event or aspect that you guys remember the most from our time in university? Absolutely, our trips. Absolutely, yeah, definitely so, the trips. I mean, we might have, we probably touched on this a little bit before, but. We had this uh, cybersecurity opportunity on campus through some major organizations and we got the opportunity to get travel scholarships to all of these different conferences. Um, So, I mean, a lot of the time it was us and other people from our computer science program, and we happened to be student leaders of the program. So we were, you know, almost, we we were extremely likely to get accepted to the, to the, to the scholarship opportunities because we were leading the whole program. Um, So anyway, multiple times, I would say, like, if I had to think about it, I mean, just between us, let me think, I I went away with you guys, like one, two, three, four, five, at least probably at least five times in terms of a free travel scholarship where we get to go away, fly somewhere across the country, go to a conference, meet these cool professionals, hang out, explore these cities, have fun. Like these are, I mean, we literally got to travel like for like three years doing all these different cool events at least a couple times a year. And I mean, those are by far my most memorable social events that we did. And I mean, outside of that, You know, I remember sitting inside of our hall and playing video games until late into the night some nights, or even when, you know, outside of just us and our main group of friends had these big study sessions where our whole class is meeting up inside these, these, uh, once again, these lab rooms and, you know, we're doing midterm final review for anything, you know, everyone in the department. And I, I mean, I can't speak for other schools, but everyone kind of knew everyone. It was a pretty small department. Everyone helped everybody. If there was, you know, if someone was stuck on something, someone was typically willing to help them get over that gap. Like, I mean, especially with my main group of friends, but even outside of that, you know, college would have been a very different experience if I tried to do everything by myself. Yeah, no, I think think you bring up a really valid point, right? Because at some universities that I've seen, I've seen, literally seen and heard of, right, the computer science culture was not really like that for some reason you know because it's a stem field everyone's like super competitive super like all right like i gotta go kick this guy's ass or whatever make sure Mm -hmm. he fails and i'm fine right like even here at universities like um right i won't say names but i've even seen and heard at universities that like just to get advantage over other students they would go and break other students computers like if they left them open in the library and stuff like that right damn that's such a horrible horrible thing right and it's like I'm very happy about the culture we had at our university's computer mm-hmm. science department just because, like, I can't tell you the amount of times I've left lab, literally, and I'm the only person in the lab, and I leave the door open with my laptop just sitting right there, right? And I've always come back, and it's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. I've never had it that something of mine was stolen or something of mine was all over the place. Like, it was really just, like, we were all super collaborative, mm-hmm. super helpful to one another, right? Hell, like, 
you know, we had we had students who went through tough times in college, right, from, you know, different parental issues or different project issues or stuff like that. And, like, we all had, like, this big group chat. Not even a group chat. We were literally an in-person group chat, right, where we were just all getting together and be like, all right, how can we help? Like, I'm going to go work with, you know, Joseph over there. You know, Four is going to go work with, you know, Mikey over there, and we're going to go call it a day, right? And, like, we sort of all, like, brought each other up and bring each other collectively together because at the end of the day, right, what what's the point of all that competition? Because mm -hmm. the people you have in your university now, regardless of whatever university you're in, these are your peer group that you're going to see in the industry, yep, right? Absolutely. Why would I not want everyone around me to be super successful? Because at the end of the day, that benefits me. If I'm ever out there looking for a job, I could literally call up a college buddy of mine and go, yo, what's good? Like, you got some opening over there? And if they're the head of some division or some team, they could do that. It's funny mm -hmm. because I caught up with one of our friends who works for a power company out in um, New York recently. And I don't know if I told you guys about this, but mm -hmm. he works ironically in uh, data engineering and R&D. Yep. And yep. he's doing some crazy, crazy freaking things over there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But because now he's so trusted, right? Mm -hmm. And because he's been there for over a year now, they take job recommendations from him. Yep, absolutely. Easily. So he reaches out to um, our department chair all the time, and our department chair has been sending emails saying, hey, you know, reach out to Mikey over here and he'll give, get, help you mm -hmm. get a job at this power company that he works at, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, these are, this is your peer group. I don't, I've never seen like, and I'll be real with you. Like I went to, you know, New York City high schools. I went to New York City middle schools and all this stuff, right? I felt that sense of competition. I felt that sense of things, but there was a purpose to those, right? The purpose of those was to get into the best college possible. Or to the best high school possible, right? Or to the best classes possible, right? There was a competition for all that kind of stuff, right? Whereas in our university, yes, there was a competition to get into some of the more upper, like, challenging classes, right? But at the same time, there was flexibility around it in that we didn't need to go kill each other over it, right? They may open up another section if you have enough students who are interested, right? We yeah. had people, mm -hmm. like, we had people, one thing I learned in university versus high school and other places in university, you had people who wanted to learn. I think that was our yep. biggest driver, right? Absolutely. Because, you know, I'm always a big fan of this quote, put your money where your mouth is, yep. right? You're literally putting money to be in school. If you're goofing off in class, doing whatever it is, fine by me, but don't waste my time. Don't waste my money and time, right? You can go waste yours, but don't waste mine, right? Like Exactly. It's And I think that's been the biggest proponent of university when we were there. Now, in terms of social aspects, right? Oh, dude, there's, I can't even like think of, I need to name off of, right? I was a TA for almost four years in college, right? I think that was one of my favorite social aspects just because of all the people I got to meet. Yep. Um, one sec. And you know, that was always interesting too, right? Because even though you were a TA and you did tutoring, right? Um, pretty much all of our, all of our peers and, and friends for our classes and stuff would show up at your tutoring session. Like, even if you didn't need help. Um, or I'm sorry, and even was, if you couldn't like answer something, hours. there was like, it was always someone in the room that could answer it. Like, you know, I never was a tutor for our department, right? But I was always there hanging out doing work. And, you know, if somebody had a question that, you know, none of the other tutors could answer, you know, I'm there. Maybe I'll, maybe I, I, I'll give my hand at trying to answer the question. Or if I can't answer something, maybe someone else in the room could. Like I said, it was just, I really appreciated the very collaborative and I mean, I think welcoming environment that was that we had. And especially yeah, people who you had like, especially pe and what I loved is you didn't have like upperclassmen who had too much of an ego to be like, okay, let me go ask this like junior for help or whatever. Yeah. Right. Or like you didn't have that ego mentality there. No. Right. Yeah. You had a couple. Yeah. You had a couple outliers. Right. And I'm not going to say everyone was happy dandy. You had a couple outliers. Right. Course, that we always talk about. Mm -hmm. But like for the most part, I remember our senior year and you guys were in the class with us, that software engineering class we took, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we were juniors, we were taking that class, but we had seniors in that class, right? Mm -hmm. I remember like four, you just said, in my tutoring hours, you had like four of the seniors go there and they were like, bro, just walk me through Git real quick. Like, mm -hmm. I need to know how this shit works, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, it's, it's fun stuff like that. And we're all super passionate and everything about technology that we can do that. And now like those guys work for some of the top companies in the world, right? So it's like, if I never need to call them, I'll be like, yo, bro, what's good? Like, I need something from you real quick, right? I remember I helped you with Git during that software engineering project. Well, just scr <laughs> scratch my back now, please. <laughs> exactly, right? And exactly. it's like, that's the whole point. But in terms of social aspects, TA was definitely up there with, with that. 
the cybersecurity program you mentioned for, although I'm not the biggest, you know, like cybersecurity nerd, mm -hmm. I appreciate the thing and I've learned a lot through it about privacy mm -hmm. and just my own personal cybersecurity. Yeah. And just being a lead on those projects and all the things. Yep. I think honestly, it's just made us, our friend, our core friend group, just so much closer because we have the shared experience on that. Absolutely. And, you know, I think yeah, a lot definitely. of a lot of colleges offer programs like that, right, where you can get travel, mm -hmm. travel scholarships, you can do fun things, right? You can have these big events. But I feel like a lot of people don't take advantage of it. Like we put in a lot of work to kind of foster growth in that entire um, um, program. Like that wasn't yeah. easy. Like we spent so much time. Like I think all of oh. us pretty much TA'd for that class at least a single time. And I mean that's that that was that's a whole that's a whole semester of of work at least. And you know that's meeting at least twice a week, two and a half hours per class, right? Like you're taking probably. 10, 15 hours a week and you're dedicating it to that class between grading, helping build material, right? Uh, doing like tutoring and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty big time undertaking when you're also working and you're also doing your own school, right? So it's a, it's just a big undertaking to have. And, you know, all of us combined put a lot of effort in to grow that program. So, I mean, I attribute that to one of the reasons why the program was able to give back so much to us in terms of these opportunities. And it was because we, busted our butts to get to get it to the point of that yeah, and the, the biggest social and the two other big social aspects for me were research you know a lot of my collaborative partners i actually work with now yeah. on projects have come from research mm -hmm. and the biggest one right which this one was just for fun and just shits and giggles so we could have a shit ton of food while still like do something crazy at the end of the night those were hackathons right mm -hmm. we did i think one or two hackathons uh together you know, that's my one thing. I wish we kind of did more. Absolutely. But like, you know, with all the time constraints we had and everything, it was understandable. It was impossible with all the time constraints we had. Yeah. But like the hackathons that we did together, sitting in, like we used to get the library. We had one floor on the library we had to ourselves yep. for the hackathons. And so when we were there doing just the hackathons or whatever, we're crashing on the couches or whatever, like that was like a whole like camaraderie thing, yep. right? That was really yep. nice, right? Um, I'd like to go back and do more thing. of that type of stuff. Like even, even, even as like a professional now working, like, I think it could be really fun to go back and like do judging or even maybe just help come up with like some type of prize ideas or even maybe fun some of it down the line. Who knows? Definitely. Yeah, it was just super fun. Plus you learn so much in that environment. It's mm -hmm. insane. You learn so much in such a little amount of time and it really like blows your mind at that pit, at that place. Right. And it causes you to be creative with a bunch of solutions really early on. But academically speaking, what like what was awesome about college, the coursework was challenging, right? Yep. It was fun, yeah. but it was challenging, especially when you got to the upper level courses like we did. Like, you know, you had what well, we had a class called um, ethical hacking, right? Which is literally hacking, but we sign a waiver. That way we don't do it outside of class. Mm -hmm. right? So purely educational, was, blah, 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 blah. Right. Yeah. And so we had a class literally that was called hacking. Right. We had a class that was artificial intelligence related and natural language processing related that me mm -hmm. and nine took together. Right. In the same semester. Right. That was a shit ton of work. But yep. like w but like it was a lot of fun and understanding and learning all these aspects. Right. We had intro to machine learning courses. Right. So all these core computer co uh, science concepts, I can say now for a fact that I'm aware of. Right. Yeah. And I have some in-depth knowledge on a few of them. But if I don't have the in-depth knowledge on one or two of them. Right. I have a buddy because of our collaborative nature that I could always reach out to. About Absolutely. It, right. Yep. So I think that's been our biggest thing for me. Like you guys remember, but... I was having that one really hard, uh, really hard semester where I had a lot of work on my plate. And oh, yeah, I remember that one. Remember, yep. I, had, I had I had my I had my online algorithms class. And if it wasn't for you guys helping me study and prepare for all the different stuff like that would have taken a lot, a lot, a lot more effort. Mm -hmm. It's insane. We, that's the I think that's why 100%. what what two could alluded to. We just basically. The environment that we walked in was just a loving kind of like you pat my back, I pat your back kind of environment. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing is that that sort of environment is just not normal in a college. It is rare in university. Very. Sadly, it's very rare in computer science university courses. And I think so in I'm most STEM very... fields in general are just really I, rare. I would agree. And to be honest with you, I did, like I alluded to earlier, I did a business minor, right? Yeah. And so I think in our university itself, we had that support within the peer group for like mm -hmm. the business students and everything yeah. or like the computer science students. So I think all the students really looked out for each other. But what was sad to see is that in the computer science department, we had our professors who had our back. Absolutely. Like if I needed something done, I could walk into the department chair's office and be like, yo, 
I need this done. Like, and I'll, and whatever paper you would need, let me know. I will get it to you, but I need it done. Mm-hmm. Right. Whereas in other, whereas in other departments, like, I don't know if I told you guys about that story I had with the finance department chair back freshman year. Right. Like mm-hmm. it was, uh, it wasn't the best interaction of my college career. Let's put it that way. And like, it sucks that those professors didn't support their students. Absolutely. And like, I felt bad for the business students more than I cared about for myself. Cause I was like, I'm, I'm part of like, my identity is the computer science department first, the business environment second, Y'all right? Y'all gotta deal with it for the next four years. Dang. <laughs> yeah. Like, and that's why. And then I asked the same thing from the department chair at the computer science department. He was like, I don't really get your ass, but whatever you need, just ping the secretary and she'll help you out here. Right. <laughs> like, and like, that was, that was the biggest, and I think that's what set the whole culture shock in me for compute for the computer science department and the business department. Yep. Yeah. It was just that one interaction. And I'm so thankful I had the interaction like October of my freshman year that it really you know, kicked everything off. Even, even our secretary was, was, was great. Like same, oh, same exact dope. way, same exact <laughs> oh, way. She was so and she was so helpful. like any question you had, like it was like, bam, one, two, three, send an email. Okay, you get a response usually that same day. Like, I mean, a lot of secretaries like to beat around the bush or like don't want to actually answer your questions and don't want to be helpful. But I mean, it was such a breath of fresh air and super, super helpful when you have a secretary also who has your back and actually wants what's best for the students in that department. And let me tell you guys something from like an, from like those admin professionals perspective. Just be kind and nice to them. You don't have to be this whole, yeah. whole like macho prick when you go talk to them. Right. Just be like, hey. You know, Steph, I kind of need your help with this. Can, if you have some time, like, let's get it done, right? Don't be like, hey, I need this now. Because then, mm-hmm. let's be real, she's not going to help you, right? Absolutely like, not. Definitely not. I think that's, like, I think the, the biggest thing. Like, just that cultural atmosphere of professors supporting their students. And that I'm surprised the business department didn't get, right? Their business graduate students got because they paid more for their tuition or whatever. So I think it was more of a politically stance thing, right? Mm-hmm. But, like... In the computer science department, they didn't care if you were a master's student. They didn't care if you were just sitting in on classes. They didn't care if you were just a bachelor's student, right? You're there in the department. We got your back. Like, we'll help you through it all. Just ask a question and reach out to someone, and we'll help and you. you. Know, and this, I think this, – this, this, is, this, is, this is pretty small, I think, right? But and we had this conference room that was supposed to be, I think, a faculty room only, right? Like, students aren't really supposed to be in there. And yeah. they have a lot of time, there's conferences and important meetings that happen. And I mean, this is supposed to be a faculty only room, but it's always full of students and none of our faculty ever kind of like when? ever complained. And I mean, like to me, that goes a really long way, right? They'd come in all the time. They had their lunch in there. You know, they're, they're kind of interacting with us. You know, They'd wave hi. They'd talk to us. They'd be like, hey, you got a question about the homework or anything? No, yep. cool. I'm going to go eat my lunch. Exactly. Like, like, and, and it was just that dynamic that like, you know. I, I just have, you know, maybe maybe I'm just naive and I haven't haven't seen enough of this myself, but I haven't seen other schools have that same type of kind of relationship with their faculty and students and even between their students. And I mean, that was the biggest piece for me. To be yeah, honest, I could e- I could even go a step further with this, right? Because I joined, you know, university a year before you guys did. Mm-hmm. The reason we all hung out in that faculty room, you know, my sophomore, junior, senior year, your guys' freshman to senior year mm-hmm. was yeah. because we used to have this room in our department called the like computer science, like lounge. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I know. But about because we got rid of the computer science lounge to make room for another faculty office. Right. We kind of made any of the labs and the faculty room, like our de facto, like hangout spot. Right. Yep. But like, if you look at engineering, like our sister, our sister um, department, department in engineering, right? It was a drastically different culture. Like, it was insane how drastic the culture shock was between engineering and computer science, right? Even though they're in the same school, right? So I found that really interesting because I remember going into the engineering department, right? And you still had, you know, one or two professors that were like, "Hey, let's collaborate, let's work on this," right? But they, but the sad part is they were shut out by all the other professors who were like, no, I'm an engineering professor. I know the, the blah, blah, blah. Right. And I was like, like, mm-hmm. bro, like just, just help us out here. Right. Like we're, we just need some help here. That's all we needed. And like the engineering students actually had a club that was open to us too. Right. It was, yeah. on, the ba- it was on the basement of the engineering building, but no computer science student that I'm aware of. Right. Never unless you were also, a, unless you were a dual engineering major mm-hmm. ever went there. And the reason was simple. Right. 
you know, just the environment and the culture shock you saw between the computer science department and the engineering just gave you that presence. Even the vibe when you walked into each of the buildings, right, was drastically different. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the biggest thing was in computer science, we care. And that faculty room you mentioned for, I've gotten kicked out plenty of times, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember one time I got kicked out and one of our professors literally came out of his room, which is the office right across from the faculty room, and yep. said that I, and then literally pointed to the security guard was like, no, I said he could be in there. Yeah. Right. Yep. Where he never, where not even once did that professor even like <laughs> go, go and tell me, gave me permission. Right. Yeah, exactly. He was like, nah, just don't worry about it. Right. And then so, if like, they did have events, it was just posted in the door and then everyone knew like, okay, they have an event in there today. No big deal. And I think that's the biggest thing. I think that was the respect factor. Yep. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Because the students had that much respect. Well, I want to say 90% of students had that much respect yep. for their faculty. Right they were able to respect us by just giving us heads up or emails ahead of time saying, hey, we need this room from this time to this time. Please, no one be in it. Mm -hmm. No one was in it. Like, we all had equal respect for each other when it came to that, Absolutely. right? And the 10% of students who didn't have respect, I'm not going to say any major things about this, but they also weren't the best in the computer science department also, right? They were, they ended up leaving the major eventually, right? So that would be that. But, mm -hmm. and, but like, let's pop over to another question from our list here, right? What classes out of all the classes you guys took, right? You know, what would you say was your most useful class? And what was your least useful class? I would have to say the, the Java class that we took. Mm -hmm. Was the most or least useful? Most. Okay. Because they kind of like, it was like the last introduction yep. class mm -hmm. we had. And it basically pushed us in the direction, in the general direction of how specific computer science can be in general. You know, it gave us the foundation of every specific class afterward to work with and the tools that we needed to get, to succeed in it, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of the, the the attitude you should have, um, you know, you know, the way the way the approach you should handle problems and stuff like that, logical issues and stuff like that. You know, kind of like, you know, it, it, you know, don't rely too much on IDEs and stuff like that, and and mm -hmm, don't be mm -hmm. too much on appearance. It should be more on functionality. You know, these are simple lessons that, in the grand scheme of things, don't seem that important. But if you think about it, it was the the foundation that we really needed to solidify our skills to pretty much pursue any specialized field afterwards. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's a reason why they set it up where you had to take that particular class first before you can get into anything specific like machine learning or AI or yep. computer vision. And for me, I felt like I learned the most in that class, not in pure, like, you know, like academic knowledge, but in pure of the skills and life lessons that I would take with me even now, Yep. you know, mm -hmm. and that's why I will say it was the most important for me. You know, Nine, I think I actually totally agree with you, right? And for you know, for you listeners who don't know what we're talking about, that Java class that he's talking about is our third sequence computer science class. So it's the final introductory class after we've done which focus most on stuff. data structures and algorithms. Exactly, right? Yeah. So this is the first time that you're really introduced to data structures, algorithms, you know, um, sorting. What's the difference between a hash map and an array and to this and to that, right? All kind of like the benefits and the cons of all of these different data structures and how they could be used and, you know, different algorithms that are associated with them or other algorithms in general. But I mean, this is probably, in my opinion, one of the classes that I think of most currently today, right? Because, you know, when you're working at a very large scale with data, like all of these things are the biggest pieces that matter. It's how fast can you do things, right? How big can you do things or how much data can you support? You know, when you're in school, a lot of the time, you're not thinking about like, oh, you know, my algorithm can't be N squared because I'm going to have to work with 7 million rows of data every day and it's just going to take seven hours for it to finish on some type of really extreme compute platform, right? That's just, you mm -hmm. don't think about that when you're a student. Or like, you're not going to think about like, oh, you know, I'm going to have to process those 7 million rows of data. Each row of data is, you know, one kilobyte. And now I have 7 million kilobytes of data that has to process all simultaneously. So maybe my RAM usage is going to be too high for that, right? Like that's not in your thought before then, but that class kind of, it introduces you to this, you know, theory and idea of runtime optimization and um, data optimization and data size optimization in terms of like memory usage. And 
I mean, all of these components, I think that those, especially now that, you know, we've been working for a little bit, are probably the most important components that you need to know and understand to be a successful software engineer. So, I mean, I think that knowing those and those kind of details and, and ideas being secondhand to you are extremely important when you're moving into a engineering role. That's fair. That's fair. You know, for me, this is a tough question for the most useful class because you know, all these classes were just so useful, so just – I have I have to say in every class I took for computer science, I learned something. Yeah. I there agree. was not one – there was not one class where I didn't learn anything. Every class I learned something, right? Mm-hmm. You know, the most notable classes, right, that stick out to me – I'm a very math-heavy person. So the algorithms and data structure class we took, right, not the intro one, the official algorithms class we took that was on pen and paper – that one sticks out to me a lot, right? Programming languages. Oh, I know Ford hated this class, but like I love this class. <laughs> yeah. Like program programming languages yeah. really stuck out to me. You know, the whole lambda calculus aspect and understanding all of that. That was also my first time uh, experiencing a class with that specific professor, who's, you know, he's he's funny as hell. Like I'm just gonna put it that way. He's funny as hell, right? And he was awesome. You know, even senior design, our senior design projects and stuff, I learned so much Absolutely. in senior in senior design and all that, right? So I can't really say what's going to be my least useful class, but, you know, I really, on a daily basis, you know, as I'm working or in a software engineering role now, right, I think back to all these classes, right? Mm-hmm. I think back to software engineering that helped me master Git. I think back to algorithms and data structures for some of the stuff I'm writing, right? Mm-hmm. I think back to even now I'm doing some hardcore parsing, so I'm looking into, like, the NLP class I took, Mm -hmm. right? And it's like, okay, like, what can I do here? And it's really interesting seeing all these concepts kind of mesh together, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of least useful class, honestly, I would have to go with one of the core classes I took. Like, if I had to go back, I'm going to say it's like, shit, maybe one of the, like, honors college classes I took, to be honest with you. (laughs) Like, (laughs) don't get me wrong. I loved reading all those books, but I was like, goddamn, can I just move on with my life? Like, you know, like, it's a lot of the core classes that they made it look the general ed classes for those of you, right? Like, you know, some of those classes kind of were just okay. Like, but there were yeah. cl- some of those classes I didn't really learn much in, right? Like music around the world, for example. Oh, freaking! I love that class. I learned so much about different types of music around the world. I still listen to different types of music around the world, right? Like if you guys have ever heard Indonesian music, it's very different than everything we've ever heard. Um, but like, it's ve- it's just very different, right? But like, I think back to like, you know, we had a writing requirement in our in our university, right? I think you guys remember this one well. It was kind of like, can you write an essay? It was thank, basically I, like. I'll the thank gym. my high school class for fulfilling that requirement for me. Ah, uh, bro, I had to take both of those classes, and it was just, what? Well, like, I love the professor, and that professor had. I lo- that's why I took the, the same class with the professor twice, just because like he was a genius. Like he. Like, he was just a down-to-earth dude who we could talk a lot of, like, reflecting things. And the best yeah. part is, he liked my writing style, right? Oh, yeah. So, I was okay with that. Whereas, I took a philosophy class, and that dude hated my writing style. And that was the only reason I didn't do well in that class, was because this professor just didn't like my writing style. You know, I right? want to point out real quick. I didn't hate programming languages. I just wish that it would have <laughs> focused slightly on different materials at some points. No, you hate programming languages. However, <laughs> no, you hate <laughs> He's like, I, I didn't hate it. I despise programming. <laughs> right. But, you know, you know, I loved all of this stuff in college. And maybe this was just based on our experience at the specific university we went to, right? So I would love to hear from you guys, like, from mm-hmm. your experiences in universities. I know from people in our listeners from India, the IITs are definitely drastically different than what we're talking about, right? Even our people in the United States. I'm sure MIT, you know, Harvey Mudd and, you know, Caltech, you guys definitely have way different experiences than we do, right? But please hit us up. We would love to hear about your experiences and everything. But I guess, you know, getting back on topic, what class? Now, this are, is an are interesting you, are you gonna one. Are going to let answer had... the question? Oh, I forgot. Oh, no. Yeah, go for it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? The, oh, the, okay. oh, no, he you went first. Like, Whoops, never I mind. Yeah. <laughs> you already answered it. I'm sorry. I'm the idiot. That's what I was That was a new question. I'm the idiot question. here, not you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> the, new, the newest question. The new question uh, now is, yeah, and yeah, we talked and we talked a lot about this at nine, you can start, right, is what class would you have liked to take in in university but wasn't offered and you think should be offered? Well, hell, I mean, 
my whole my my whole career started because a class wasn't offered at my university, which was <laughs> architecture. So if, if, it, if it was outside, if we're talking about outside of the uh, the CS field, no, no, inside no, I'm CS. Talking about within our- I'm talking about within the CS department. That's why I was okay. confused. I'm like, we had computer architecture. Like, <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, within our, honestly, I, oh, a uh, big one, UX and U, uh, UI. Mm-hmm. Our mm-hmm. school, unfortunately, did not offer any of that, and that's prim- primary reason why I actually went abroad. Um, because by that point, I most of the classes that I felt the fundamentals I've taken, most of the unique fields like AI, machine learning, stuff like that, I already taken. But there was this dramatic hole of like no UX and UI classes offered at all. Mm-hmm. And if they ha- did offer it and it did exist, I would have definitely would have taken one or two easily. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Four, what about you? Oh man, you're putting me on the spot here. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, here's 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 something I think could have been cool. Um I would say the most useful class, as of right now, looking back, that they, that we didn't really offer at all, was stuff regarding continuous integration, continuous development, deployment, testing, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I mean, just I mean, maybe like cloud infrastructure stuff, right? So, like, it's like a straight like, class dedicated to that. Yeah, like, like intro? so. I mean, that for for me, I mean that that's one of like the, the the biggest hurdles I've had, kind of like getting over now, because it's one of, just one of the things that I'm that we've never been exposed to before in the university system. Like, you know, they're not they're not having you like use Jules and use Jenkins and use all these different cool cool programs, right? So like these would be really helpful things to have done in university before you get to the workplace and now have to just start picking those things up, you know, and like. Maybe that could be rolled into software engineering somehow, or maybe it could be a second uh, class to software engineering. Maybe that should be a full year class. Mm -hmm. But I mean, just more of kind of like software life cycle outside of, you know, building from scratch. What do you do with the existing SDLC, you know, stuff, stuff like this. So I think those would be really useful and would be very nice for fresh graduates to have coming into uh, the workplace. No, that's an interesting point. And I think if you took software engineering with, the other professor who came from industry. Yeah. Right. I think maybe you got it. Maybe you would have been exposed a little bit more to it, but even then I see your point. Cause it was a lot more theoretical on the software engineering side. Right. But exactly. you know, from my perspective, if I were to add a class really, yeah. um, or bring one back, cause you guys all know, I would love to have brought back compilers. Um, would have just been to like, it would either be to bring back compilers. Right. I was really trying to convince one professor to teach compilers again. Right. Yeah. Um, I think he got scarred from the last time he taught it, so he never taught it again. But like, it would be that, or an advanced level of some sort of of class that I was very passionate about. So maybe like an advanced machine learning class that you get into all the deeper machine learning neural network topics, right? Or you yeah. have a deep AI or a deeper AI class. And I think that was our biggest thing because we got very exposed on the surface level to a bunch of different stuff, right? But I think one thing that in my perspective, right, and I and I understand from the university perspective why they didn't offer it, just because you didn't have like that many students who qualified to take that sort of thing, which I guess was one disadvantage of going to a smaller school because you know the more uh, most advanced classes you couldn't really take, but <clears throat> at the same time, you know it would have been nice if we could offer these things. But I think one advantage our university had, right, which may or may not still exist depending on some stuff I've been hearing, right, is uh, we have these things called independent studies, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I was able to actually take, like, a financial programming class, right, with a dedicated professor just because, like, I was a- – beca- uh, just because um, I was interested in the course subject, right, and mm-hmm. it wasn't offered. But, again, this was the exception, not the norm, because I had already finished all the general electives that would have made sense for me to take, mm-hmm. Right. And they knew that for me to get a better challenge and most bang for my buck, it would have made sense to go and take an independent study. And I think that was the biggest aspect. I think that was drastically amazing in college, at least from my perspective. So I guess I have find two more questions, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But why should other people consider school, right? So we we talked about our perspective, right? We We came in because... I came in because I wanted to learn computer science and I was never able to really program an app until I got to college and now I don't even program apps, which is really funny, right? 
you know, four, you really came in because it was like your passion, like diehard passion. Nine, you kind of just fell into it, right? It was just, yeah, it was there. And you were like, all right, cool. Let's go cool. check I it like out. Tech. Yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> Pretty but much. like, why should other people, besides the passion aspect for obvious reasons, right? Why should other people go and think about going to university? In university in general or CS? As, uh, honestly, on this one, we could talk about both. Uh, I think university in general. It's, I have a lot of family members and friends that kind of like asked that question to me before, right? And usually I ask them, what are you looking for, right? What, what, do, you, what do you hope to gain, right? A lot of people say a job. You know, at the end of the day, I, I, it's, a, it's a medium to me to get hopefully a job at the end of the, the four-year cycle, mm -hmm. right? I would say if you go to university and hoping to get a job, there's nothing wrong with that. But a, a, a good way to view things is that it should be also a way for you to experiment with yourself and challenge yourself. You know, mm -hmm. university is kind of a very weird and exciting time where you can pretty much have the luxury of trying out different different things, different fields, different pursue different knowledge and stuff and still have time and, and be flexible with everything. You know, it you're not going to really be in, in that sort of period of your life where you can just go out and try. Oh, I want to try music composer or I want to try. um learn about music around the world, like two alluded to, mm -hmm. or even do a, a more intense writing composition class, or even within the CS, like you could be someone who's a CS major, but not really interested in machine learning, right? This will be the perfect time to take on classes of machine learning and be like, fully find out what's, what's that involved, like, and if you actually do or hate it or don't hate it, right? I think that's pretty much uh, of course, you know, computer, a lot of times college is pretty much just to get a job, right? At the end of the day, we're, we're primarily, most people are going to college just to get a job. That's pretty much how it is. Right. Mm -hmm. But I also think that if you are want to, uh, thinking about going to college, you should consider it like a, a challenge, like a, a time for you to really express yourselves and find your, you know, find what you're passionate about. A lot of people go into college and they're not even sure. What they want to do I, I will say unfortunately four is a rare case where he knew exactly what he wanted to fall into yeah and exactly what how how to tackle it and pretty much what he wanted to be coming out of it a lot of people don't know what they want to do coming in right and i would say this is the time especially the first two years to just try everything just try as much things as you can and then see what sticks and then go from there yep or what's your perspective on this? You know, I've also had these similar conversations with other people. Um, I even had a couple of good friends during college who came in undecided. Um, and I don't think it's a bad thing to come into college undecided. I think that if you are undecided, just make sure you're making a smart, I guess, financial decision. Because, you know, if you don't know what you're going to be majoring in and you don't know your income potential in the future you know, that should definitely weigh into your school choice. Um, I don't know if you guys agree with that, but I definitely think it should. Um, now, beyond that, like Nine was saying, um, I was telling a lot of these friends that, you know, being undecided is not going to do you any good, right? Like, you know, if so what, you might take a handful of gen ed classes, right? Like, those aren't really going to help you figure out what you want to do. You know, you got to just kind of branch a little bit. Take a handful of classes in different subjects, right? Meet the people, meet the professors, do some work. And even one of them, one of my really good friends, I told him, I was like, listen, just try a CS class, right? We were both freshmen. I was like, take one of my classes with me. I was like, let's just see if you like it or not. And, you know, he actually went on to like it. And now he has a computer science degree, graduated with us um, last, uh, in just in, actually last May. So, I mean, that was, that was really cool. So, I mean, you really just got to kind of, even if you don't know what you want, you got to try and figure it out. Make it a point to figure it out. And, I mean, college is really an investment, and you got to spend your money properly, I think. Yeah, so. you know, I think you guys hit all the major points on the head, right? I think you should know. I think college is for the benefit of, or university in this case, right? Mm -hmm. It's for the benefit of those who have somewhat of an idea of what they want to do. It may not be you know, standard, right? But have like a plan and a backup plan, right? Mm -hmm. Like, 
Byron was CS, but like if I bombed my first, like I was gonna run to the business school as fast as I possibly could, right? Like that was kind of my forte there. We had a friend, right, who was a bio major, right, for a year, a year or semester. No, he was a bio major for a semester. He, but he took one intro to CS class during that semester. He was doing bio, and he was like, "All right, I like this." And so now he's on track to become a professional video game developer. Yep. Right. Like, it's crazy how many twists and turns everything get. But I think the biggest thing is that even if you go into college undecided, like you just want to get a degree of some type, talk to people. Absolutely. Spend the, your first semester, your first year, talk to as many people as you possibly can, from seniors to professors to the youngest people. Right. Talk to everyone just so you get a good idea and gist of all the different majors. And right? go to the events and the different departments. Like every department has all these different events. They get professionals to talk, right? They you know, right now obviously it's everything's on Zoom, but still you can go still hear people talk. You can network. It's even easier questions. now that it's on Zoom. Like yeah. you it's even easier now that it's on Zoom. You don't gotta run across campus in the middle of like some things. You could literally log into your computer and listen in, right? Yeah, you might like, hear someone talking about what they do at work and be like, Oh my god, that's so cool. Like I really want to do that and like, you know, net bam. Just that one realization might have given you your whole career path. Right, exactly. Like, But be proactive about it. Don't go to, Absolutely. don't go in undecided and be like, all right, like right, I'll figure it out later, right? And three years go by and you go, shit, I didn't declare a major, right? Yep. Like, that's a problem, right? So Yeah, don't waste time. In, especially in the United States where it's expensive, right? It's an expensive problem then. So Too expensive, if you ask Go me. in and take a consideration there, but... Final question, and then I guess we'll close out because I think we're almost at time, right? Yep. Is yeah. Overall, was it worth the money and the time spent when you guys went to university? Four. Let's start with you. Absolutely. For me, absolutely. You know, like like I said before, if I could go back in time, I wouldn't really change my decision. You know, I'm pretty happy where I am right now. I mean, I consider my you know tenure out of high school to be fairly successful and i mean i'm very happy where i'm standing right now so i i wouldn't i wouldn't have changed anything nine what about you i ask myself this question every time i pay my loans (laughs) (laughs) but uh realistically yeah yeah i mean i wouldn't change it um i'm even fortunate enough to like realistically i i don't even have that much compared to my peers yeah and and, (laughs) but even then um, and even if I wasn't, even if it was more, I wouldn't change it. Uh, I got to, uh, like I said earlier, um, it was, it was a very weird decision that I taken to jump into a field. I had no prior knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, but I went in there mostly with just the love and interest of technology in general. I was a big tech nerd. Right. Um, and that alone has pushed me to, you know, pursue this career and pretty much discover a love that I have for programming and I got to meet, you know, the, the way the school was and the t- professors, I got to meet such interesting people. I got to meet a whole variety of different peers and colleagues and mentors that I would never have the chance to uh, even meet or get to know. And I can call many of them friends and, uh, you know, people I can call for favors or mm-hmm. they can call me for favors. So honestly, even if my debt was double the size right now, I probably wouldn't change my decision at all. Yeah. I'm not saying something because it hurts me. <laughs> a right, lot. Two. Yeah, we know. So, too, uh, yeah, after, after you go, I, I guess... want to give one last little piece of advice, but let's go ahead. You go first. Yeah. So, I guess on my end, really, it's – I think it was the time, the money, everything, right? I feel like – you know, were there some aspects I feel like I could have maximized my time a little more? Thinking back now, yes. But even then, like, I wouldn't change 99% of what I did in college, right? I would not, right? I got to meet amazing professors who are still mentors and will continue to be mentors moving forward, right? I got to work with some amazing people, right, in my computer science classes. I made friends for life. Like, two of them are right here on this podcast Mm -hmm. that we're recording on right now, which was literally we talked about, like, six months ago, and we were just like, all right, F it, let's do it, right? Like, Where are they? All right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. (laughs) They died in Among Us. They must have um, died like... in the first episode, sadly, when took over. <laughs> but um, I was the imposter. But, uh, mm-hmm. like, it's it's all these different aspects that are really full together. I have friends, really, you know, I already had friends who, from across the country, and I think that just exasperated even more with my college experience. You know, I have a friend from Kazakhstan now. 
I couldn't even find that on a map until I met this dude, yeah. right? Like, I still can't find it. <laughs> like, it's, well, I was watching Borat last night, so I found it. But like, <laughs> so it's interesting to see all these aspects really come together. And yeah. so, in summary, I wouldn't change anything about college. You know, the time, the money was well spent. And maybe this was just my experience. You know, I know some people come out of college and be like, yo, I freaking sucked. But I mean, even now, I still go back to some of these events, right? And these things. And it's just really nice. It's like it's like coming back home, right? So yep. it's like, it's always nice at the end of the day. But that's on my end. Yep. For, for what did you want to close off so on? I, I just wanted to give one last general piece of advice for all students or all, you know, young people looking to go to college. Um, this is not really talked about all that much by you know, your counselors and your, even your high school teachers and, um, admission counselors and whatnot, do yourself a favor and please think of college like an investment and be very careful with the amount of money you're going to take out to put towards that investment. Because the whole purpose of an investment is to come out on top. You want the money you put in to be way less than the money you're going to eventually get out of that. And, you know, I don't feel that enough people talk about how, you know, if you take out too much in loans, you can end up kind of getting yourself caught up in a snowball that you really don't want to get caught up in. So be very careful with how much you take out. Really think about it. Um, and I mean, so long as you do those things and, you know, maybe take a little bit of the other advice that we had towards the beginning, I think that you could definitely turn college into a very successful experience. Yeah, yeah I agree. But with that, guys, this has been, you know, I don't even know what the title of this episode is. Wow, that's really bad. Was college worth it? Uh, was, co- was university worth it, right, for our international crowd? But was university worth it? Um, and this has been... And the answer was no. Podcast. <laughs> no. No, it was not. It was yes. No, for me, no, it was yes. No. It was yes. <laughs> In sh- long? Yes. In short? No. <laughs> <laughs> but this has been the 429 Podcast. Guys, please follow us on all of our social medias. Like, subscribe, hit us up, DM us, right? We're looking forward to hearing from you guys. But with that, I'm two. I'm nine. And I'm four. And we'll and see you. And we will you. see you next week. Later, Bye-bye. guys. Bye-bye. Bye.